Welcome to June's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is swim in rising water. On an n times n grid, each square represents an elevation at that point i and j. Now rain starts to fall. At time t, the depth of the water everywhere is t. So you can swim from a square to another four directionally adjacent square if and only if the elevation of both squares individually are at most t. You can swim infinite distance in zero time. Of course, you must stay within the boundaries of the grid during your swim. You start at the top left square, zero, zero. What is the least time until you can reach to the bottom right square of n minus one, n minus one? Here, I think this is a good example. We can see that all these elevations, uh, it's gonna require us to hit 16 if we wanna get to the path that's gonna reach the end here. Now, at first glance, it kind of seems like uh, this is kind of a pathfinding algorithm, and probably why don't we just start at the zero zero in uh, zero zero starting point and just go to the direction that has the minimum point and just start. Okay, we can go up, down, left, or right. Uh, we can go right here because this is less one, and go two, three, four, and just keep following that uh, until we would hit the end. And whatever the maximum height that we had to hit to get to this point was, that's going to be the output. That's going to be how much time it takes for everything to fill up so that we can reach the end. But the issue with that is, say that we had some square like this. Um, like if we just started at the zero, zero, right, and said, just follow the one with the minimum one. Well, we can see it's going to go, okay, zero, or we'll go to two, then we'll go to three, then we'll go to four. But here at four, the only direction we can go is down, and that's going to be 100. And obviously, that's not going to be the, the minimum one. So what we'll have to do is, uh, here they give you a hint to use Dijkstra's, and we'll use a variation of Dijkstra's here. What we'll do is uh, put onto a heap all four directions that we can go that's still in bounds. So here we can go either down to, to 10 or go right to two, and we'll put that on a heap. Then we'll pop off the one with the minimum amount, the minimum height, and we'll start from there. And as long as we haven't visited the node, we'll go, okay, we'll go to 50, we can go three, and put that onto the heap, and that's just gonna move forward. Now, as soon as we hit four, it's going to put 100 onto our heap. And we can see that, well, we have a path that we could have taken before that would actually minimize it less, right? So we'll go back to that. We'll pop that off the heap, and we'll start here now instead and see. Um, we'll continue that algorithm, trying to minimize the height that we can hit until we hit the end. Now, it's possible that there's no other direction other than hitting this 100. And if that was the case, that would happen in our algorithm. All right, so what we'll have to have is um, some sort of heap, heap structure to keep track of this. And we'll pop off, we'll have uh, the, the, let's see, we'll have the height. We'll put into a tuple, we'll have the height as the very first item and the I and J, or I should say row and column as the second and third item. Okay, so let's see here, let's begin. First, we are going to initialize n and m. So n and m are going to be equal to the length of grid 0 and the length of grid. Next, we need a heap. So this just will be a list. And we're also going to have to have a visited set here. This will just be an empty set. All right. So. Uh, well, first thing we, we need to do is add to our list, and this is going to be a tuple of, um, let's see, starting with whatever values at grid zero, zero, and the rolling column, which would be zero and zero, right? All right, so we'll also store our output, which is just going to start at zero. So while there's a heap, we're first going to pop off the minimum height, right? At first, there's going to be zero, zero here. So let's first pop that off. Let's see what should we call it. We'll call it, um, I guess we'll call it max, and we'll call this RC. We'll pop off heap, pop off our heap here. Okay, let's first store our output to be the max of either max or output. And I'm going to create a list here for the directions. I'll uh, we'll call it directions. This will be a list of tuples.
And let's see, we can move four directions, right? This would be 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, and negative 1, 0. All right, so 4, let's call this uh, dx and dy in direction. We're going to add to our r and c. So we'll call this rx and r, or c. I'll call it rx and cx, I guess, which will just equal r plus dx, and this will be c plus dy. So if rx is in bounds, so this is going to be the row, which has to be uh, m, has to be in bounds of m, so rx is within m, and ry, or I'm sorry, cx is within n, cx is within n, and this tuple here, rx, cx, not in visited. Let's add it to our heap, heap push onto our heap. The value at grid rx, cx, as well as uh, rx and cx itself, right? So rx, cx. Now make sure to add this to our visited set to make sure that we're not going to hit any cycles. So this would be a tuple of rx and cx. Now finally, um, uh, actually we need to have the indication when we know we want to break this loop, right? So uh, if rc is equal to, uh, let's see, m minus 1 and n minus 1, well then we've hit our n, so let's break, break our loop, let's break out of here. Finally we turn our output, and let's see if this works. Okay, so that does look like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go, accepted. So time complexity is going to be, uh, well, okay, let's just say n times n is going to be m, all right? So that's m log m, pretty much, right? Because at most we'll be traveling every node or every cell one time, so that's n times n, and we're going to insert to a heap, which is going to be log n times n. All right, so I, I think um, at first it looks like a really, you know, intimidating problem, but it's actually not that bad if you know Dijkstra's algorithm and uh, simple pathfinding algorithms. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.